you're a boxing fan and never want to miss a fight, Boxing Showtimes is the app you need. This is a professional boxing schedule in your pocket that keeps you up to date on what's going on in the world of boxing. Download now. Paulie Malinaji here for Paulie TV. Back for another episode here with the co-host of the man, the man, the myth, the legend, Peter Cards. What's going on, bro? Ready to go. All Excited. Right. We've got another guest for all of you right now. My boy. Pistol Pete Dobson, Bronx, New York zones. Pistol Pete Dobson. What's going on, bud? What's going, how's it going? What's up? What's up, fellas? All Thanks right. for having me. All right, man. So, uh... You got a, a, you're moving along in your career. I actually worked at one of your fights earlier this year, right? Was it this year or was it under last year, man? I don't remember. Well, um, was it yeah, that was, my last, with, that was my last fight. With Borrego, was okay. Year. I wasn't even sure if you fought again after that. So you haven't fought since the Borrego fight? No, no, I haven't fought. Okay. This is going to be my first fight since then. Okay, all right. Um, So, you know, let's get back into your background, bro. You know, let, 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 let's let the the Poly TV listeners uh, kind of... Get to know a little bit about you, Pete. You know how how did you? Uh, yeah, this is your stage, bro. Let how did you get into boxing? On. And uh, let us know a little bit about uh, you know how you arrived to the scene. Um, I used to I used to get into a lot of street fights and uh, like play. I used to play basketball. I used to fight over basketball and all of that. And then they had like a Morris Park boxing gym was by my aunt's house, oh. and my mom brought me there. And then I went for like a I went for like a summer. But then I stopped going, and uh, this guy who who worked at my mom's job, he used to be a pro boxer. He heard like that I was doing good for those two months, so he kept telling my mom like, "Bring bring your son back, and he'll train with my old trainer, and he'll make him a Golden Glove champion." Or and like I had uh, got in trouble in school, I couldn't play on the basketball team anymore. Like my grades wasn't good enough, mm-hmm. so uh, I started going back to the boxing gym, and I won the Golden Gloves. Like I had told myself like. I'm, I'm going to try this boxing out, and if I don't win the Golden Gloves, then uh, it's not for me. And then I won the Golden Gloves, and then bro, you, you, I just kept you, going. You set the bar high, bro. There's no, not everybody wins the Golden Gloves. Especially in, in New York. <laughs> in their uh, first try. Uh, how many no, months? It, was, it wasn't my first try, though. It was oh. it was my second try. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So how many yeah. months total had you been doing it? Because you do, you done the Golden Gloves once, but had you been really training the first time you did it? Uh. Shit, nah. I really didn't train. Like, my first trainer, like, I wish I would have knew more about boxing. He, he used to only train me for the Metros and the Golden Gloves, and then I used to take off the rest of the year. Like, Oh, man, you were, you were like a pro fighter. <laughs> you, yeah, you were yeah, fighting to like off. Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I didn't even um train, like, year-round for boxing. Like, yeah. I would just train for those tournaments. Yeah, of course, because in the amateurs, you know, I mean, it's very important that you, you stay in the gym all the time because you, you're not really training for the tournaments. You're training to improve as a boxer so that in the long run, you know, you have a future, sure. You know, so th- exactly. is that is that what you started doing with your next trainer? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And but he- it, it took a while, like, to get, like, you know, I learned, uh, like, I learned that on my own, actually, like, mm-hmm. and then I switched trainers. Okay. <laughs> so was, uh, do you, were you always in the Morris Park boxing gym the first time around and the second time around? Um, no, I was, I was in Morris Park the first time, and then the second time, I, I, when I went to Morris Park... <laughs> So the first time I was in Morris Park, but when I went back, I wasn't in Morris Park. Like the guy who said he was gonna get the trainer for me, he wasn't from uh, Morris Park. Okay. He was from a called Cornerstone. Okay. All right. And and uh, and 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 even now, do you train out of the Bronx still now, or do you uh, are are you uh, in other places? Well, I, I mostly train out of out of Miami, like okay. not really Miami, like close to Miami, uh, Hollywood, Florida. Okay. And uh, That's not far from now. You, bro. I'm what, what, what gym you train at over there? In DC? Uh, no, in uh, uh, in my in Hollywood, Florida. Oh, uh, it's this gym called Bay to Bay. It's like a it's a private gym. It's not too far. You know what Warriors? You ever heard of Warriors gym? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. It's like a few blocks from there. Okay. All right. All right. And now you said yeah. you're in DC. Yeah, now I'm in DC with the headbangers. Yeah, oh, I, there's yeah, my. They f- work you over there. Yeah, yeah that's great oh, there, work. They work. You know, that's big on yeah. uh, work ethic over there. Uh, so. You know, I remember Morris Park. Is Morris Park still around, man? Because I remember Morris Park when I was an amateur. Uh, Victor Valley Jr. was there. And Victor Valley Sr. was a trainer for Jerry Cooney. And I remember uh, Victor Valley Jr. With the cones? Uh, he had, uh, he had, um, he had uh, a, a young fighter. Actually, when I won the Novice Golden Gloves in New York, Victor Valley Jr.'s father, John Var- uh, Victor Valley Jr.'s fighter, John Vargas, won the outstanding novice fighter of the tournament you know and they didn't give it to me they gave it to john john was a good fighter though but uh 
The, who was your trainer? What would you do? You, uh, you want to mention who the trainer was over there? Or did, was it anybody? Um, uh, it was uh Victor Pena. Oh, Victor Pena. But it was oh, like so. Was Valley so there by that point? Valley Ju Victor Valley Junior. Was he there or was he gone by that point? No, he was gone by that point. Okay. I, I I think I heard him before, but I've yeah. never seen him. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know if Victor Valley Senior still alive, but I don't know Victor Valley Junior was uh you know he was around at that time, but I'm not sure. Pete, is that where they do the double A boxing equipment? No, they do that in Bronx Chester. Bronx okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And Bronx Chester was where Joe Rios was from, right? In my generation. Yeah, but yeah Joe going... Rios. Oh, you yeah. remember? Okay, I, sometimes I mention these yeah, old yeah. names. I'm not sure if guys like you remember them because you're a little younger. Yeah, yeah. Joe, Joey Rios is actually from my neighborhood. He's from Throgs Neck. I'm from, like, Throgs Neck in the Bronx, and he's from there. Okay, yeah, he so, had a like... good little following. He was not a bad fighter. He was a good, and the amateurs especially, you know, they he all was had a, the shirts. Yeah, he was a, he used to bring a lot of people to the fights, bro. He, that kid could, was a ticket seller, man. If he would have stuck around yeah, a little longer. Good little fighter, you, yeah. too. Good little fighter. So, uh, Peter, so you ended up doing the Golden Gloves. You won. How many amateur fights did you end up having before you turned pro? Like, I don't really know the exact number, but in between 30 to 40. I don't really have that. I love that. I've come across but, people like that where you lose your book and you, yeah. you, see, you forget the, name, the number of fights you got and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I forgot how many yeah. I had. That's great, man. All right. Uh, and so um, you end up turning pro. With, we see here you, you you end up turning pro with the, with, the, with the Holyfield Promotional Company? Um, Actually, I turned pro with... Uh, but I wasn't signed to him with like uh, my pro. My first two pro fights were with uh, Dimitri Salida, and okay. then I fought all all on like Lou DeBella cards. But I never ended up signing with Lou. But it's funny because I asked Lou like, "When you guys gonna sign me?" He's like, "Aren't you signed to us already?" I'm like, "Lou, nah, <laughs> that sounds just like Lou, bro. That sounds like Lou. <laughs> well, like after Lou I smoke, would fight, Lou smokes more my... weed than, than most people you'll know, bro. So, so. Yeah, he used to always be in my Lou was like, like there's a partnership there. <laughs> and so then he yeah, every time I fight you, he, he was standing in my corner and like think that he was my promoter. I was like, yo, dude, what bro, you can me? I, man, man, I, I needed this guy to be like this when I, when I was around, you know. <laughs> forget who he had signed. You forget to give you the contracts, <laughs> so, so I can yeah. leave when I want to. <laughs> oh, that's great, bro. But then I was at your fight, Pete, when you fought at the resorts, right? Then you signed with uh, you signed with Holyfield, then. Yeah, that's when I was when I signed with Holyfield. And and, yeah. and did, did that company come apart? Are they still around? Because I, I had heard Holyfield wasn't around anymore, right? As far as promoting. Yeah, they they had uh they went uh bankrupt. Oh yeah, so, yeah they uh I heard uh they you know they they had part I heard they had been departed ways with them and then uh you know things has happened I don't know yeah yeah I don't I don't think it was like really the vendor I think he they just used his name yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he I was like that. the face yeah I um that. actually Eric who used to be in charge of the commission yeah he was with them yeah too. he was he was doing yeah Sal Musamichi and all those mm -hmm. winners yeah it was great over there. Yeah. um so okay so uh, are you signed to anybody now Peter are you basically run as a free agent right now because on the pro box show you you fought well bro I don't know the, the, I'm thinking of the the pro box show you fought with with Miguel Borrego um you 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 put on a clinic. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. I, I was happy that uh like you, Roy, and um like I and Tarver got to like commentate because hearing you guys is like uh take on my on my fight was great. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's, we we thought, you, to say. we thought you fought a really smart, disciplined fight. And honestly, Borrego is a guy who you know has the reputation to be a good puncher. But uh, can kind of be domesticated by uh when a guy when a boxer is is good enough to just lull him to sleep and you made it look like it was a sparring session. I mean you 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 really handled yourself very well, and uh, you know you had the pro box guys questioning whether Borrego needs to keep fighting. To be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Borrego is a good dude. I like I like Borrego, man. He's a um good kid. What um so tell us a little bit about Saturday night. So you got this kid. Uh, was it Cota? Uh, Korea. Korea. This kid, Korea. Argentina. Okay. Yeah. And what, uh, what, um, have you seen that? Have you gotten a look at this guy before? Uh, what, 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 what who basically, what, what's the mindset behind the, the matchup for Saturday night? Um, I'm going to just, uh, you know, start off with a jab, find my range. He likes to move, so he's not, uh, like from what I see. Yeah, I'm going to cut off the ring using my jab. Try to step to my left, but even though I, I fought a lot of southpaws, I could even I could go to my right. Mm -hmm. But it's better when you go to your left. But uh, 
and just no, I'm start off the I, mean, job. I, I, I never believe in the whole textbook. You got to go one way against the softball. It, it, it's all circumstantial at the end of the day. Yes, there's different techniques to go, but there's also techniques to go the other way too, as long as you're careful with the power hand. You know, it's it's the way it's the way yeah. it works. You know what I mean? The only bad thing about when you go to your right, if they keep on throwing their right hook, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't land, it could push you off balance. That's the only reason. Like, like say you throw a jab and they mm -hmm. step to the to the right, it'll push you off balance. Yeah, that's yeah. only yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, that's true. It depends on what your stance then too. You know, you gotta lean your lean your lean your own your own weight onto that back foot a little bit. So you can pull on that hook yeah. on that hook. But um, so as far as uh the matchup uh. Why this guy? Is there a particular? Are you looking to fight more southpaws? Are you looking to uh, uh, you know improve against southpaws? Uh, or was it just time to fight a southpaw? You know, sometimes on your way up, you know, you have to see a southpaw um, like these and righties. So to be honest, it was uh, it was the matchmaker. Like uh, he he got that uh, opponent, and like Barry tried to switch it to a uh, um, orthodox guy because like. It's my first camp in D.C., and they really didn't have that much Southpaw sparring for me. But then I ended up getting a lot of Southpaw sparring, so it was like it, it actually worked out. You know okay. what I mean? All right, so there wasn't a lot of sparring but, there for you just because it was Southpaw, so there wasn't a lot of sparring in general because Headbang is usually, headbang has, is usually had, had, a, lot working, of, had yeah. a lot of fighters, right? I was to, to be honest, I was only there for the last four weeks of my camp, and uh, you know you don't spar the last week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, I was getting a lot of rounds. I was doing like 12, 13 rounds. Okay. But it was it, some of the guys were orthodox, so. Okay. That's all right. Sharp is sharp. Punch is coming your way. That's, uh, you know, as long as yeah, you. Exactly. Get, yeah, exactly. You know, that's, that's, I, I, I believe was, that. Yeah, I believe in that too. I, listen, I do believe you need certain specific work for certain kind of opponents, but also rounds in the bank. And a sharp for my will notice, make adjustments. I notice it, it, it just improves your radar, your natural radar. You know what I mean? Like you, you start to get that feel for the defensive dif distances and, and, and timing and all that other stuff. If you're a boxing fan and never want to miss a fight, Boxing Showtime is the app you need. This is a professional boxing schedule in your pocket that keeps you up to date on what's going on in the world of boxing. Enjoy watching fights in a bar, sipping a cold one? We got you. An interactive map with your local boxing bars is available to you at any time. And that's not everything. Set reminders, buy tickets, watch official highlights, get boxing news, and so much more. Download now. Thank us later. Yeah, man, that's a, uh, like, you know, I'm a big boxing, uh, like, I'm a, what do you, like, I'm a historian, student of the game. Historian, fanatic. You're a fan of the business yeah, that you're like, in. Like, like, no, I'm a student of the game, and I study everybody, and I listen to what everybody got to say. Like, I talk to people. I feel like I know a lot about boxing, so, mm -hmm. like, certain, certain people, I can hear them talk about boxing. Like, you, I could tell you, you got, like, a, a lot of knowledge in boxing, and, like, not even saying this to, like, uh, like, any uh, like you know how people say you don't really have like like power or whatever, mm -hmm. but to me you have one of the best jabs in boxing. Like yeah. one of you had one of the best jabs, and you went so far because of your jab. Yeah, so yeah. like with you, I would study you and study your jab. Like your jab took you to the top. You feel mm -hmm. me? Yeah, yeah. And no. your foot, and also your footwork too. Well, that's it goes hand in hand, Peter. You know, uh, you, yeah. when people say you can't hold off a guy with with just a jab, so. And that's nobody's denying that you can't hold a guy for a guy with just a jab because it's not a power punch. But jabs mixed with feints, mixed with uh, the adjustment of distances. If a guy closes the gap, you know, like you 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 take that half step back and you keep using that jab, or he steps he steps back, you step in with your jab. You know, remember what brother Nazim said? Mix it with feints. Yeah, yeah, brother Nazim uh, who was uh, who was uh, Bernard Hopkins' trainer. And uh, had he had actually some son to uh, his son twin sons who could really fight in the amateurs, but they just they never they didn't pan out in the pros. Uh, but he used to tell me that uh, I couldn't knock off uh, knock a, a glass of a water, glass of water uh, off with a, table a running with start, a running start. <laughs> <laughs> but I could but I could but I could box the hell out of it. He said that's you know? not a knock on Paulie. I know the kid since he's amateur. He mm -hmm. goes, he's talking about one of the smartest fighters to ever do it. He said, put that kid with some hands like a Maidana. He goes, you're talking about one of the best. Yeah, but that, that's the thing, Peter. You know, uh, nope. when when there, when there, you have a passion for something, you'll find the improvements. You'll find the ways to improve. Mm -hmm. and, if, and that's what, you, what I, I like that you said you're a student of the game because when you're a student of the game, you find the little subtleties, man, to improve. It. Because under, it, ability gets you far, but understanding this sport, understanding the nuances really gives you a knowledge in there because as Mayweather always used to say, he's the smartest fighter that wins the fight.
and and I that's I like I feel like I'm underrated and people don't know that like I have a high IQ in the ring. Only people that like spar with me or uh like all my sparring partners would tell me like damn yo you make just so many adjustments, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh like people people see me fight, you know what it is like a lot of my fights were against guys that like, cause I feel like when they put you against God with a with a losing record, you're supposed to knock them out, cause that's what the fans want, that's what the mm -hmm. uh, promoters like. So it's like I go in there, like oh, I'm gonna knock this dude out. So I might not get to show my skills, but when you put me with a guy who's actually like I feel like he's good, yeah, he's that's gotta, when I really take, he's gotta the, take you to that higher level. Exactly. Yeah, that's really when I when I pull turn my tricks up. out. Yeah, you turn yeah. it up. Yeah, cause really I remember the the, the pro box show. You know, we were looking at uh. You know, obviously, Borrego was signed to the company. You know, they were looking at Borrego um, as, you know, it was a good fight with you because, you know, you have your, you come with your ability, but they were looking at it like, okay, Borrego's power could be the difference in this fight. I mean, you was, you made it non existent. I mean, you, you boxed very, very well in that fight. It made him put thank his hands you, in his pocket, made him put his hands in his pocket, which I always think that's what a good boxer does. A good boxer will make a, a, a stronger puncher and turn him gun shy you know and that, and that's and that's what you'll notice if you when you have a good jab and you mix a good amount of feints with that jab it's uh it gets uh it gets better I'll, I'll give you one little trick that I always uh, one of my trainers used to always tell me when your jab is landing your feints become more deadly absolutely because when your jab mm -hmm. is landing the guy's biting on any move because he's he's frustrated getting hit with the jab he's gonna react when your to jab moment. is landing the feints become deadlier. He's, he's, he's you're gonna be you're gonna be if your jab's not landing, he may not bite on feints as well. But if your jab is landing, feints become even more killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, so, so uh, oh, what um what do you have uh what do you have uh what's your goals? What are you looking at for uh the rest of the year? Let's say you know you, you what's your record now? We're fourteen and zero or so. Uh, fifteen and zero. About to be sixteen. Okay, so fifteen going on to sixteen and zero. Goals by the end of the year. Uh. Eyes on anybody or, or anybody in that top ten or anybody uh, that you're looking at as far as uh, uh, recognizable names that you, you you'd like you'd at least like to try to get and even not so much recognizable names but even names that let's say um, you think are achievable for you because like I know like in somebody in your position would love to get like an Adrian Broner for example but Adrian Broner is going to be looking to sell his name against you know, fights that can make him a lot of money, right? So those fights become a little bit unattainable unless you can get, start to build up against better, bigger and better fighters that are more than recognizable. So ultimately, do you have anybody like on the outskirts of the top 10, top 15 that you're looking at, you, you feel like I would, it's, it's I would attainable? Like fight, uh, yeah, uh, Connor Ben. Mm -hmm. that. Connor, Connor Ben. ben. Con and re realistically, I'll fight, I, I would love to fight anyone. I, I just want to be on TV. I want to get with the with the right promoter and, uh, you know, take my career to the next level. Cause I feel like that's, that's what I'm missing right now as a promoter. And I usually come in on the B side anyway. That was like my, um, I want to say my second fight on the B side, mm -hmm. but, uh, I had a, another fight where me and the guy was both signed. Like my first fight, I only had one fight with, um, Holyfield mm -hmm. and I fought a kid that was signed to Holyfield too. Like they signed both of us. Okay. So it was like, and it was, they, uh, they tried to make like an elimin elimination match. Yeah, it was basically an elimination match, two two undefeated guys fighting. Mm -hmm. And then I fought a kid on Al Heyman. I came on the B side in uh Las Vegas and I knocked him out. He was sixteen and zero. I was only I think I was only ten and all. Yeah, that, again, that's your cerebral mindset, man. being able to outthink opponents and and, and uh, eventually you know what it is, man? When people don't let you in the front door, eventually, if you're good enough, and it's hard, it's unfortunately a harder road. So you're having a fight to take on these undefeated guys on the, <clears throat> taking the B side or whatnot. But eventually, man, your character gets built enough to where you can handle yourself in these big fights, man. That's what, that's what I found. I found in my career, I had 44 professional fights. In 11 of them, I was the odds uh, odds makers underdog. In 11, I mean, 25% of my career, I fought, I came into the ring and I was the underdog against. Uh, against uh, my opponent, you know what I mean? But if you win enough of those, you start, they, they're going to have to take notice of you, and that's what you're starting to do. You know what I mean? You're starting to force people to take notice. And uh, if you keep doing that and keep uh, keep putting that in, keep put, obviously putting in the work in the gym is what counts the most because 
it improves you. You get smarter. It also shows your passion for the game because you cannot improve unless you're passionate about this game. You know what I mean? Because, because you want you when you're passionate about it, you're gonna live and breathe it. When you're not passionate about it, you're gonna do your work. You know, you're gonna it's gonna become monotonous. You'll do the work. I remember because I remember at the end of my career when I was no longer passionate about it, I would still do the work in the gym, but I leave the gym and not think boxing anymore the rest of the day. You know what I mean? Like unless I had to get back to the track and run or whatever, I was not thinking boxing anymore. But when I was passionate about it, I was leaving the gym still thinking boxing all day long. You know what I mean? So if you we would watch tapes, if, if, yeah, study watching videos, tapes, watching videos, everything. So, so, but when I when that passion left me, I'd still do the physical work. I was in the gym, you know, when I needed to be. I didn't miss workouts, but as soon as I left the gym, I got in my car. I wasn't thinking of boxing unless I had, until it was my next workout. You know, so so if you keep that passion, because you especially that you have that cerebral mind, you're gonna keep getting better and better because you're gonna be keep, keep picking up things, learning things, and you're gonna uh, you know just continue to make those improvements. Yeah, man. That, uh, I feel like that's you. You're absolutely right, and I feel like like this last fight, I got my most like I got the most recognition for this one. Because mm -hmm. even when I beat the 16 no kid, like Al Heyman said he was gonna sign me, but I don't know what happened. I was th I was thinking that. I mean, you beat one of his guys, an undefeated guy. I mean, they got such a long, I know, big stable that you just get sometimes you get lost in the mix. I'll tell you what, bro. You know what? I'm gonna talk to my guys at Pro Box uh, about you. I don't, I don't even know that uh, that you weren't signed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I, we can get you back on the show down there too, man. But keep 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 uh, keep doing what you do, man. You know, uh, do your thing this weekend. They can't deny uh, you forever, I, brother. And uh, and I, I, that, keep that New York swag. Yeah, yo, you got any? Uh, we gonna see any crazy hairstyle? What do we got Saturday? Nah, just uh, I probably won't even get a haircut because I'm in Atlanta. I don't, <laughs> oh, uh, you, you don't want to? Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't, don't have, trust them, right? You don't want to f around and go to the wrong barber. Yeah, bro. <laughs> when you're from yeah. New York, that's just serious. Not only that, you gotta know the barber. Pre fight, yeah. a pre fight haircut, bro. You know, yep. those those things on the record. That's documented because your video winds up on YouTube or yeah, pictures. You better off <laughs> just getting the shape up, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when Paulie had to get his uh, braids cut uh, off. Bro, we were just oh, talking, we were about, just that talking about that before. I was telling my producer kids, but I was like, yo, bro, I mean, this was... Yeah, I got... Here's what the, the thing about that night was, bro. I got... It took six hours to braid that hair, right? <laughs> so... So, bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sport this this hairstyle for a while because I'm mean, I got six hours. I didn't go through six hours for nothing. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> so when they want to cut it at the end of round one, I'm like, hell no, bro, no shot. You're not cutting this hair, bro. I, I took all six hours to, to yo know, tape to take this thing up, and you know, let me get back out there. I'm, you're not cutting my hair, bro. You know, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna sport this for the summer. You know, because the fight was in May. Yo, <laughs> fight round head. after round, and I was fighting a guy who was a veteran, so he knew how to, you know, he would in the clenches, he would rake my hair and make rip the tape out of it. And by the time we got to like round eight or nine. My hand broke halfway through the fight. My hand broke around six. I was one hand that I had hair on my face. And I, 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 they started cutting it. They didn't even ask me. They just started cutting it. Yeah, I, that I was it. I, we I, had to make the executive decision. <laughs> yeah, it was either the IBF championship of the world or yeah. my hair. <laughs> so, so, so we decided to let go of my hair. You know, so be yeah. careful with the crazy hairstyles. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I fought once. One time, I I fought with a like I had like a mohawk, a long mohawk, mm -hmm. and then after I forgot the guy's name. He's like a famous, uh, what is it called? Like commentator. Uh -huh. And he was like you uh like we went back to the airport in the morning. We took the same like Uber. Mm -hmm. He was like you should cut your hair because it makes the punches look worse. It's true. Yeah, he was like true. You were, when you, yeah, he was like when you get when you were getting hit, it made the punches look worse because your hair was so long yeah. and they were like ah. Uh, oh, it's true, man. Shit. It's true. I remember when I had the spiky hair uh, early in my career. I used to have that uh that that Jersey Shore haircut uh that the whole Northeast had at that time. And um, I remember when that they used to, you know, they used to pour water on my head in the corners. So when I come out in the corner, man, I take a shot. That that hair, that hair was soaked, man. It, that that's, that that hair, that that would make all the sweat fly and everything, you know. And I remember I caught slack for the braids, but when I did cornrows, yo, no no extra sweats flying off your cornrows, bro. You know what? That's a good that's a good hairstyle for inside the ring. Cause oh, that, that's that's exactly what the guy said. He said next time you should braid it. Yeah, that's but cornrows, but cornrows, not Jamaican yeah, braids. Cornrows. Otherwise, yeah, you want yeah, Jamaican yeah. braids, you wind up like I did with the other fight. You know, or you once I did cornrows, I did good. Or you just go full Miguel Cotto and get the buzz cut and just yeah. use your head and scratch the shit out. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. Miguel was funny because Miguel was a guy. Uh, he always had a couple different hairstyles too early in his career, right? And with me, he was the first time he shaved his head bald. And, bro, that head was so effective for him that he never grew hair again for any fight. 
If you if you look <laughs> if you look at the Miguel Cotto fight with me, he had hair before my fight with the fight with me, bro. Every fight before me, he had hair. He had like curly gelled up hair. He had, he had cornrows. Corn he had different hairstyles. Yo, he had he the had, afro with he, chop chop. Yeah, he had the baldy with me, bro. Caught me with a butt. Was a was a bro. It was a nuisance. Every clinch was like he was raking his head. He was so good at that. I tell you what, bro. I think he realized it was so effective. He never ever grew a back hair again. <laughs> he, 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 got, he got a baldy from my fight to the rest of his career. Yep. Oh, so you, that's also a more simple one too. I'm I'm praying to God I never have to go bald. <laughs> yo, you, yo, you know what? I'll tell you. <laughs> di different, di various of us men, we have it at different times, right? Some guys I knew, man, early twenties, they were already losing it. Some guys mid twenties, some. You get to your thirties, I feel like you 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 beat the game. I started losing hair in my mid thirties, you know, and I I got a I, had, I went to Turkey and got a hair transplant because I was losing it in the front. <laughs> I was losing it in the front, bro. I was losing it in the front. I was. You get the hummus, out. you get the lamb, and then we plug your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pause. See my, see my, uh, my boy Peter. He's got, he's got all his hair. He's good, so he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to worry about these things. But man, I, I tell you what, bro. You, you, you don't think about it when you're young, but then when you get older, you realize your whole generation is losing their hair. You're like, yo, what's going on? And then yourself, you know, I found myself losing it too, you know. So I hope yeah. uh, you never have to go through that too. But don't think about it right now, Chip. You know, you, you still young. Worry go about get that, that work in, bro. Make that weight and do your thing Saturday, bro. All right, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. All right, man, and we look forward to uh, you know, continuing to see your uh, your success, your improvements, and uh, you know, doing it the hard way may not be uh, as easy as some guys might have it, but it builds up your character and prepares you for the big time. All right, sir. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys, man. Stay All well, right, Peter. Bro. Have a good workout later. Thank you. Have, and do good luck this weekend. Uh, thanks. That was Peter Dobson on Paulie TV. We hope, you, we hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll catch you next time, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Keep an eye out for Peter Dobson. He's a good young prospect uh, with, with a very, very good mindset, good head on his shoulders, and also uh, a fighter who's made a lot of improvements through the years and uh, undefeated. And really, like, yeah, you'll, 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 you'll see he can do some, uh, he can do some damage. He, he's kind of floated below the radar, but he's ever improving and now uh, working down at Headbangers. Where guys like Lamont Peterson came up and stuff like that. You know, it's... Uh, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good place for him out there too. Uh, so we hope like, comment, subscribe, like I said, and check us out next time on Paulie TV. If you're a boxing fan and never want to miss a fight, Boxing Showtimes is the app you need. This is a professional boxing schedule in your pocket that keeps you up to date on what's going on in the world of boxing. Enjoy watching fights in a bar, sipping a cold one? We got you. An interactive map with your local boxing bars is available to you at any time. And that's not everything. Set reminders, buy tickets, watch official highlights, get boxing news, and so much more. Download now. Thank us later.